the weather is changing and a cold front is creeping through. One morning, not too long from now, I'll wake up to find that Jack Frost has swept through, stealing all of the vibrant annuals that I spent all spring and summer tending to. Well, not my petunias, Mr. Frost. In today's video, I'll show you my tried and true methods for digging up and overwintering petunias and other annuals in a heated greenhouse or by a sunny window so they can bring beauty back to my garden next season and save me a ton of cash in the process. Now let's dig in before the frost gets here. Now when choosing which plants to dig up to overwinter, you want to choose your healthiest plants. So a plant that looks like this rather than a plant that looks like this. Now it's always easier to dig up annuals from your baskets, but if you need to take them out of the ground, that's okay too. You want to leave about four to six inches in between the plant and your garden fork or spade. And you want to get as much of the root ball as possible. Once you've got your plant with the roots, you want to go ahead and shake off as much soil as possible. You don't want to clean the roots completely because having some soil left on the plant will actually help it to avoid transplant shock. But get off what you can because we will be repotting these in a sterile soil that is meant for greenhouses and to help prevent things like root rot and fungus gnats. I'm just going to put them in this pot. You can see that they come up relatively easy. I'm going to shake off that soil. I am racing against time to save my petunias before the cold snap hits. The key here is being gentle with the roots while moving quickly to ensure that they transition smoothly. I've got some of both of the colors of petunias that I planted this year. Let's hit the hoop house and I'll show you what to do next. It's kind of sad that so many people just let their annuals die at the end of the season when really with just a little extra effort, they're very easy to keep alive. The day before you're going to dig up your plants, you want to water really well. That extra moisture will really go a long way in helping your plants avoid transplant shock. Now that we're back in the hoop house, I'm going to start preparing my pot to plant all of my plants. Now I'm going to shove as many plants as I can into one big pot because that will be easier for me to maintain. And I've made sure that I got some of each color, so be sure to do that for yourself as well. Now you know me, normally when it comes to potting soil or pots or any of that stuff, I say just use what you have, but this time it's a little bit different. When you're overwintering plants, whether it's in a greenhouse or in your house, because of the warmer conditions, they're more likely to become infested with fungus gnats. They're also more susceptible to root rot and fungal diseases. So. What I recommend is a soil that is sterile, that has both a biofungicide and mycorrhizae. I use this Promix BX, which has both. It's not the only soil that has both of those ingredients. So you can go ahead and find a different one if you can't find this one. I found that this soil is great for greenhouse growing because the high porosity makes it really well draining so that the roots have time to dry out and they don't rot. Now the biofungicide in this Promix is actually a bacteria that helps prevent fungus that's damaging to the plant roots and also helps prevent things like fungus gnats, which I love because I've had some epic battles with those both in my greenhouse and in my house in the past and I don't ever want to go through that again if I could avoid it. The other ingredient mycorrhizae, I feel like I always say that wrong, but hopefully I got it right this time, is actually a beneficial fungus that helps expand the roots and helps coat the roots and protect it from other fungi. Now, I usually get this at my local greenhouse supply store. So if you have one of those near you, like a Griffin's, they'll probably have this. I haven't seen it much at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can also order it through Amazon. That was what I did this time. It was a little bit more money than 
at Griffin's, but Griffin's was out of it, so I had to order online. So I'm gonna open up this package, I'm gonna put some into a tray, and then we'll pot up these plants. If you're interested in learning more about this particular brand of soil, or just the two ingredients that are in this that you could probably find in other soils near you, I'll post some information down in the description that you can look at. Now this is just a used nursery pot. I use them for everything. I use them for garbage cans, here in the hoop house and in the greenhouse. I use them in my yard for everything. They're fantastic to have. I never throw them out. But I will caution you that if you are going to reuse your pots, you wanna make sure that you thoroughly clean them first because you don't wanna introduce any bacteria, viruses, or any pests or eggs or larvae that could be kind of hiding out in there. So a good rule of thumb is to clean your pots with nine parts water to one part bleach, scrub them out a little bit, give them a really good rinse. You don't want any bleach left in there when you plant your plants and then let them air dry overnight. That's what I did with this one. I tried to do that with all my plants, although I'm not gonna lie, every once in a while, I just kind of give them a quick rinse and it's usually okay. But especially when you're talking about greenhouse growing, anything that could be growing in your pot in a hot, humid environment is going to explode and you don't want that. So I'm just gonna add a little soil to the bottom of this pot. Now you can see this is a relatively large pot. Okay, so I have some lightly dampened soil in here. I find that it's easier to work with for me and it's better for the plants, but I'll still water these plants in once I'm done planting everything. You can see that the roots on my plants are still relatively small. I've had other years where the roots were much bigger and you can trim back the roots if they're really kind of scraggly or if they're taking up a ton of room, you can trim them back. Don't trim them back by more than half. You're probably safer trimming them back by about a third. Now you wanna look at your plant. You wanna make sure that you don't see any obvious signs of pests because again, if you put something with pests into your greenhouse, it's gonna spread and you're gonna have a battle that you don't wanna have. You wanna remove any foliage that's dead or diseased. as well as any spent flowers. And see here how I have a few dead stems. I'm gonna take those off as well. Planting these out in my greenhouse, I don't want really big plants to take care of. I don't want them crowding each other. I don't want too much of the foliage touching if I can help it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these back by about half. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can still overwinter your annuals. You would just put them in a sunny window. And you may be thinking, well, what good is that gonna do me? How many plants can I possibly save if I'm keeping them in my house? Here's the good news. Things like petunias and sun patients are really easy to propagate from stem cuttings. So I'm not saving nearly as many plants as I have, but then six to eight weeks before my last expected frost date, I'm gonna take cuttings of all of these plants to grow out so that they'll be ready to plant after the danger of frost has passed. So if you don't have a greenhouse and you're gonna do this in your house, you really only need a few plants of each color that you really want. And then later on, you can always do cuttings. And even if you only manage to save a few plants, that's probably gonna save you 30, 40, or $50 next spring. And who couldn't use a little extra money in their pocket? When cutting back your plants, you don't wanna cut them back by more than half. You do need to leave on some significant leaf material so that the plant can still photosynthesize. I keep my greenhouse relatively cool. I have a very small heater. If you've seen my video on heating my greenhouse, it's a very small heater that is only meant to keep my greenhouse warm enough that my tropical plants and my annuals don't die over the winter, but they will put on very little growth once the cold temperatures start rolling in. And then in the springtime, when the days start to warm up, that's when they will start growing. So I'm also, as I plant these, I'm also gonna cut back a little bit on the fertilizer because again, I don't want really big plants in my greenhouse, but we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so there we go. I've cut this plant back by about half. I've kept the roots because there wasn't that many of them and I'm going to go ahead and put it into my pot. On to plant number two. 
All right, and you can see that there is a dead stem here, so I definitely want to take that off. When trimming your plants, you want to cut just above a leaf node. Now you can see this one has some really long roots. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this a little bit. And they'll be just fine. Now you can see that this one has really started to get kind of leggy because of the decrease in the amount of sunlight. As sad as it is to say, you also want to trim off any flowers that are currently growing because you want the plant to spend its time really setting roots. Okay, so you can see that I have smushed in as many plants as I really feel like I could effectively get into this pot. I'm gonna fill this up with soil. And because it's such a big pot, they'll have plenty of time to grow out during the winter. And you wanna to try to keep your plants separated as much as you can. As they start to grow, especially later in the year, there's going to be some touching. They're going to reach out and touch each other. Um, and you wanna avoid that for as long as possible, but eventually it's going to happen. Just keep an eye on things. All right, I'm all filled with soil. Plants do need fertilizer if they're going to overwinter, but you don't wanna give them a full dose of fertilizer because again, you don't want really big plants trying to grow in the cold weather. They're not going to put on the same amount of growth that they would during the spring or summer because of the decreased light and the cooler temperatures. So a good rule of thumb is to fertilize by about half of what you normally would. I use Fluorocon Slow Release Fertilizer, which is good for about three months. I'm gonna put half of the amount that I normally would into this pot and then I'll water it in. You do wanna keep an eye out on your plants for signs that they need more fertilizer. If you start to see stunted growth, or yellowing of the leaves, it could be an indication that you need to add a little bit more. So then I would supplement with just a diluted liquid fertilizer in an instance like that. So now I will water this in. It will go into my greenhouse when I see that the temperatures are going to dip below 40 degrees, which hopefully is not quite yet. I'm hoping I'll get another week or so. But like I said, they are predicting a cold front, so I'll have to keep an eye on the weather. The reason why I say 40 degrees is because you know that your plants will become damaged if they are out in the frost. If they're damaged by the frost, you'll have a lower success rate in growing these out over the winter and being able to replant them next year. So why not just be safe? I move them in when I see that it's going to dip below 40 degrees just to make sure that they're safe and they don't get any kind of shock or damage from the cold weather. Eight to 10 weeks before my last frost date, I will take cuttings of my petunias to multiply the number of plants that I have to plant out in the spring. Petunias and sun patients and other annuals typically will root in about two weeks. However, if you are growing your cuttings in your greenhouse and it's chilly, it will take longer. So you have two options at that point. You can bring your propagation trees into your house where it's a little bit warmer or you could just start a little bit earlier. I tend to start a little bit earlier only because I don't like to have too many things in my house. I feel like sometimes when I look around my house, I look a little like a plant hoarder, which maybe I am. So I try to start them in my greenhouse if it's not too, too chilly. If we're having warm days and just cool nights, I'll leave them in the greenhouse. If we're having a really severe weather event where it's very cold or we have a polar vortex or something like that, then I will bring my trees into the house. Once my petunias root, I do bring them in the house and I grow them under grow lights so that they'll be really nice and big and ready to plant out after the danger of frost has passed. So check back in with me this winter and we can do some cuttings together. But just to give you a little bit of an idea, in case you forget me, you would want to take a stem about four to six inches in length. You want to take off all the lower branches and any flowers or buds that are there.
you want to leave just a few leaves at the top for photosynthesis. Then you want to just scrape the bottom a little bit. Dip it in a little bit of rooting hormone like this Hormidin. You don't specifically need to use this one. In fact, this is probably like a little bit of overkill. And then plant it into a tray like this one and put a humidity dome over the top to maintain humidity. So here's a tray of petunias and sun patients that I put together as I was trimming back my plants while I was potting them up. Hopefully these will take and I'll be able to plant these into a pot just like the one we just did together. I'll do this again when the plants are big enough in probably February. Now today's video was specifically about petunias, but I use the same strategy for things like sun patients, which you can see here. Um, and I made a video about that last spring. So you can go ahead and take a look at that if you'd like to see how that looks. And I'm gonna give you an update on the pot where I planted the sun patients last spring in that video. But I learned this technique from my mother. She's been doing this with geraniums for longer than I can remember. I don't think that my mom has bought a geranium in about 20 years. <laughs> so you can also adapt this strategy to any other annuals that you may want to save. Don't forget to check in with me again this winter. Maybe hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss that video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.